Hi everyone, welcome to Printful Threads Volume 3. My name is Marianne, I'm part of the Printful team and I will be your Printful Threads host. Um, Printful Threads is Printful's very own online conference series and each conference is dedicated to a different topic so make sure to follow us on social media to know when the next edition rolls around. Um, but what's Printful, you might ask? Well, to answer you could say that we're a print-on-demand company and you wouldn't be wrong but I'd like to think that above all we're a company that helps people like you turn their passions and ideas into brands and products. So if you got an idea for a brand, we're here to handle your orders and products so you can focus on growing your community and making sales, of course. So to those of you who joined us for the previous editions of Threads, welcome back. Glad to have you here. And uh, well, is it too late to say Happy New Year at this point? Was it January 22nd? I don't think so. So Happy New Year, everyone. I wish you above all health, happiness, and the strength to tackle anything that this year throws at us, you know? So we're um, very grateful for your support and very grateful for you being here. We're very excited to see what you have in store for us and what ideas you're gonna, you know, come make a reality um, uh, this time around. Um, the topic of the conference is actually about just that, bringing your business ideas to life. And that's why we t we've titled it, How to Start Your Print on Demand Business. So if you, you've been mulling over some ideas, you know that, 2021 could be the year that you're finally gonna start working on your online uh, e-commerce business. Time to stop mulling and start doing. Like this is the year, and um, who knows? You just might find you might find yourself living your best life after all this. Um, and just like in the last conference, we've got a fantastic lineup of uh, speakers for you, all experts in the field of e-commerce and all of them with experience using Printful. Um, each of the speakers have their own unique story of how they got to where they are today, but one thing is in common. They all worked very hard to get where they are today and their efforts have helped them transform their idea into successful businesses. And uh, something you may have seen on our website is that this is a one-day event or rather a two-ish um, our event and here's what's in store for you today. We've got Connor and Jaron, Jonas, Kim, Keandra and Ariana giving three presentations and what I am hoping to be a pretty exciting Q&A round at the end. Um, but before we get into all that, I wanted to tell you guys about what you can do to tell us how you're feeling and what you can do to share your thoughts and musings, um, you know, with us and you know, just pretty much share whatever whatever's on your mind. So one way you can talk to us is in the comment section. Um, of the platform you're using to watch this live stream. Feel free to ask questions to the speakers. Just don't forget to mention the speaker for who the question is for. And after that, our team will round every uh, question up and then we'll have them there for the Q&A session. Um, and if you're watching through our Printful Threads landing page and you want to leave a comment, just open the video on YouTube and leave your comment there. And another thing you can do while watching is post your takeaways and learnings and findings on social media. So Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, you can share all your feedback um, and just slap on the hashtag Printful Threads. Uh, we'll be sure to bring some of your feedback and findings up on the screen later in the conference. And if any of you watching want to check out Printful.com and maybe order some cool custom swag for yourself, um, as a special little bonus at the end of the conference, we'll be sharing a coupon code. Um, you'll be able to enter a checkout after um, finishing up your order and that will give you a $5 discount off your order. So isn't that neat? Like, just a little something to get you started. Um, the coupon expires at the end of January 25th, and that's the end of January 25th LA time. So there's not too long, uh, you know, not, not, not too much time to spend on uh, thinking about what you want to get. So you're going to act quick. You're going to have to act, act quick. Um, there you have it. I'm ready, kind of. I hope you're ready. And I hope our first speaker is ready. And our first speaker is going to probably pop up very soon on your screens. And uh, the first speaker is Connor Gross from Privy. And um, he is going to try and give answers to the big question that's probably on the minds of many of you watching, how to hit that first sales milestone. So let's give a warm Printful Threads welcome to Connor Gross. Um, let's have him up here on screen. Hi, Connor. What's going on, my guys? Glad to see you. Welcome. Awesome. Right. Cool. Uh, I think my screen should be shared then. So let's go ahead and uh, kick it off. I'm excited to be here. Um, okay, guys. So my entire presentation today is all about how to go and make your first $1,000 in sales. Uh, at this point, I have started a handful of different businesses and I know the struggle that comes when you are trying to go and earn your first $1,000. Uh, and so after starting a handful of them, I have created a blueprint that I want to share with you all here today. Uh, a little bit of background on me. My name is Connor. 
I'm 23 years old. And last year I sold my first e-commerce business uh, that I started in college. Once I graduated college, we sold it uh, just a little bit over a million dollars. And uh, it was entirely in the cell phone accessory space. So we were selling a product called Cardly's um, and we se would sell stick on card holders for your phone. Uh, little fun facts about Cardly, and the reason I'm telling you this is just to kind of give you an idea as to like what I've done and let you know that you know I have been around the e-commerce space for a little bit. We have sold over 70 different SKUs. Uh, in 2019 alone, we sold over 100,000 units, and 100% of the sales were online. A uh, little regret of mine, I kind of wish we tried out our hand in retail, but it was always a lot of fun being able to go and sell on the internet. Uh, these days, I'm on the marketing team here at Privy, along with running another e-commerce store, which we actually use Printful to fulfill everything with, uh, called Respoke Collection, which is an entirely automotive enthusiast um, custom art product uh, that my partner and I spun up just this past year. So today's topic is how to go and make your first thousand dollars in sales. And that's without asking mom and dad and out, without asking all of your friends to go and buy your products and leave a review. So today's talk is simple, right? Whoever's listening to today's conversation, at some point, I'm thinking that you must have had an idea, whether it is, you know, you want to go and launch your own clothing brand, or you have this really great supplement idea that you want to go and take to market. My job today is to go and convince you that you should start it and go and earn your first thousand dollars in cash. Uh, things that you don't need in order to go and get that first thousand dollars. First of all, you don't need a thousand dollars. I'm a, a big believer that the saying you need money to make money uh, only actually applies to really scaling up. I actually don't believe that you need a whole lot of money in order to go and make that first thousand dollars. You just need a little bit of money to go ahead and get started, order your initial products and be able to go and create your Shopify store or your, whatever store you're selling on. Um, but you actually don't need that a ton of money to go and get that first thousand dollars. You also don't need an innovative idea. You're able to go and do this with just any plain old idea, you know, even if it's just clothing or if it's just, um, you know, a food product or a beverage product out there, you don't necessarily need something that's groundbreaking. Uh, and you also don't need a big team. You can do this by yourself. So four steps to go and making $1,000. Uh, when I was making this presentation, I was going to call it the ACE methodology. I was super excited about it. I had, you know, awareness, conversion, engagement. I was super excited about the ACE methodology. And then I realized you totally need a hook after you go and get awareness. Uh, so the steps are going to be awareness, hook, conversion, and engagement. I'm going to walk you through all four of those today. Step number one, awareness. So if you have a product idea or you have a product out there in the market today, for some of you who might, there is one main reason why people are not buying from you. The number one reason more than anything else in the entire world. They have zero idea who you are. Okay. And when I think about how to go and drive demand for a business, I know that awareness is able to go and create a brand. And that's why getting awareness for your brand is so important, right? That's why companies like Coca-Cola out there are advertising on million dollar billboards in Times Square. Because they know that at the end of the day, if you're aware that Coca-Cola exists and that if you're aware that their product is out there, when you're hot and you're walking for a while for the day and you stop off in a convenience store and you just really want a soda, you're going to be picking Coca-Cola over the other brand because you're aware of their brand already. And because you're aware of their brand, you know, I, I this took this quote from an old manager, brand creates demand. Uh, and so your job as an e-commerce marketer is to go and create awareness for your brand. And the biggest mistake that new e-commerce stores make with very little budget is that they think that the only way that they're able to get awareness is by going to these massive platforms, right? Facebook, Instagram, Google, Twitter, YouTube, whatever it is, right? There's a million platforms out there. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with advertising on these platforms. I advertise on them all the time. But if you have a low budget and you're looking to get your first thousand dollars in sales, these platforms are going to be an extremely cost inefficient way to go and get there. Okay, these companies will get you awareness, right? They have some of the biggest audiences in the entire world, but they're expensive and they, they are expensive because they know they have the biggest audiences and you're going to go and need to test your product. You're going to need to test your product copy and you're going to need to test your landing pages before you should actually go and be investing a lot of time and money into these platforms. But lucky for you, there are tools that you guys can go and use today that are free that you can go and do to go and increase the awareness of your brand. And so I'm going to go and give you three different ideas today that I think that you can go and start off for free that will go and increase your awareness immediately. The first one is a free tool called Haro. And usually anytime I'm starting a brand these days, I always go and make sure to monitor Haro emails. Haro emails stand for help a reporter out. And basically what this is, is that anytime that a reporter is writing an article, whether it is the best electronics that kids in their teens want to go and buy for the Christmas season, or what should you be going and getting your wife for Mother's or for uh, for Mother's Day or Valentine's Day or whatever it is? They'll go and send out weekly or daily emails 
to individuals who are subscribed to their list. And you have reporters on here ranging from Business Insider all the way over to Vogue, all the way over to your mom and pop blog. And every time I go and launch a brand, I think I immediately want to go and get press. I'm a brand new product. How can I get press? This isn't such an easy opportunity to go and be able to go and reply to all of these reporters saying, hey, actually, I just launched this brand new product. It's at a really affordable price point. And I think your readers would love it. And so this is a tool that I always use whenever going and launching a brand. It's a really easy way to go and get write-ups about your product and get your product out there. Now, the next one is TikTok. And I know I just kind of basically made fun of a bunch of social platforms before that, but we are actually living in the golden era of TikTok in 2020 and 2021. Okay. I completely think that if you have a product out there and you're not making TikTok videos today, you are going to be paying for it down the road because anytime that a new platform goes, comes out with a new product, such as TikTok, they're going to go and want to get as many users as possible on it. And so the amount of brands that I've spoken with in the past 12 months that have gone viral for free with millions of impressions and millions of consumers seeing what their product does and resulting in hundreds of thousands of sales because of TikTok is absolutely insane. And I can only imagine that the virality of this platform is going to begin to decline over the next one to two years. And they're going to be turning from less of a host and go viral to more of a pay to play like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and those platforms. And the very last idea is Quora. And I know what some of you might be thinking, Quora has been around since the stone ages. Why is this a good idea today? Well, Quora actually has a couple things going for it. One, they are incredibly high indexed on a lot of the search rankings. So some of the most common questions that you might be searching out there, such as what car I drive if I'm in my 60s, or uh, you know, where should I be going and shopping for the best organic food? Uh, things like that, Quora frequently will rank for on the top page, meaning that they get hundreds of millions of searches every single month. And one of the easiest ways that you can go and promote your product on Quora is finding these questions, finding questions that fit into your space. So if you're selling tea, for instance, right, I got a little mug of tea right here. You can go out and start researching, hey, what are some alternative medicines that people are looking into? What are some drinks that people go and use to go and relax after a long day of work? Uh, and start answering as many questions as possible on Quora, being extremely helpful. And then at the end, just plugging your product saying, by the way, I created this product. If you're interested, check it out. It's a really easy way to go and boost your brand and boost your sales. Now, this is the part that I added because I think that I had an entire formula written down and I was like, wait a minute, I'm missing something here. And that is hooks and offers. Okay. And what a hook or an offer is, is essentially the reason that a customer will, will visit your store. So it's not necessarily enough to be able to go and say, hey, I created this product, come check it out, right? That's a failing strategy. And this is you know, the worst quote in the history of quotes, in my opinion, as someone who does marketing, someone who does sales, uh, the quote that says, build it and they will come. Uh, I've got to imagine that person had zero dollars in Shopify sales or e-commerce sales overall, um, because it's a horrible strategy if you actually want to go and grow a business, right? And so one of the things that you should do when you're reaching out to these people who can write reports or you're creating your TikTok videos or you're answering questions for people in a community on Quora is be able to go and create an offer for them because humans are lazy, right? I'm lazy, you're lazy. Uh, and so what we need is we need a reason to go and click something. We need a reason to go and want to go and look in your product. And so when you give the customer the reason, that's going to go and entice them to go and actually check out the product. And so you've seen examples like this all the time, right? If you're swiping up on an ad, you'll see 25% off your first purchase. If you're partnering with an influencer, you'll say, hey, here's a coupon code that you can use for purchases over $40 for all of my followers. Or same thing down here, use the code $10 to get, uh, or use this code to get $10 off of your purchase when you're writing a blog post, okay? But it doesn't just have to go and be discount codes because I know that we're e-commerce sellers. We have very thin margins as it is, unless you're selling something that uh, that I haven't heard of. If so, hit me up. Um, but so the offers don't just have to be discounts. They're definitely an easy way to go and entice customers, but you can do everything from buy one, get ones, limited edition products, free accessories when they order a certain amount, free shipping over a certain amount, or even things I've seen today, like exclusive access to Facebook communities if they order within a month. Uh, I know that's really popular if you're selling beauty products or supplement products, right? You want to go and have a community around you that is like-minded. Now, step number three, right? So we've gotten people where they know what the product is. Awesome. We've gotten to click on the link. They are now on your website. What are you going to do to get that sale? That's where conversion comes in. And this is actually the harsh reality that not a lot of people realize when they're out. Uh, the average e-commerce store converts at 1%. So if you're driving 100 people to your e-commerce store today, chances are 99% of them or 99 of them are going to be leaving without buying anything. It's very sad. But there are three things that you can go and do on your e-commerce store that can go and help you increase your conversion rate today. 
First one is reviews. So being able to go and say, anytime that you get a sale, you have to go and ask that customer for a review. What did they go and think of your product? How can you go and improve your product? Reviews are essentially the easiest way to go and get someone to go trust your store and want to go and purchase your product, right? And the way I think about it is this. Getting a stranger on the internet who has never heard of your product in the entire world to go and can, and you can, to, sorry, to get a stranger on the internet that has never heard of your product to give you money is one of the hardest things in the world, okay? And so by showing them that other people have already given you money, that other people have already bought your product, they have photos of your product out there, and they're actually enjoying it, right? That is the easiest way to go and sell on your website. It's like having your own personal sales assistant on your website. So definitely, definitely recommend getting a lot of reviews. Uh, the other one are product photos and details, right? And so what you might not realize is that if you're selling a product in retail, whether it's clothing, candles, wine, whatever it is, um, it's actually really easy for a customer to go and figure out if they want to buy it or not. When you're selling that online, it becomes a lot more difficult. And so if you're selling clothing, you're going to want to go and include as many details as possible. Hey, this is a cotton polyester blend. Hey, this is the softest fabric you're ever going to have. If you're selling candles, same thing, right? Oh, we actually have you know a buttery oak lemon scent, right? Uh, or wine, same thing as well. Uh, and so use these product photos and these details to go and sell your product for you because chances are you're not going to have someone on your website to actually go and help you sell the product. So make sure that these are really up to date. Now, next one, uh, pop-ups. And so this is actually a little bit of a plug for the company I'm working at right now is Privy. Uh, we are super bullish on pop-ups. And you know, while some of them might be a little bit intrusive and you might be wondering, hey, is it worth having this on my site? Let me tell you right now that Email is one of the best ways to go and grow your e-commerce sales. And so I would highly go and recommend having pop-ups on your site because at the very least, if you're capturing 10% of customers' emails who are visiting your site, that's nine more people that you can at least reach out to who haven't already purchased. And so pop-ups are a really easy way to go and increase your conversion rate on your website because if they leave and they didn't buy, now you have their email address to follow up with them later on. And also, this is one of my favorite quotes from the CEO of Shopify, Toby Luca, who says that email lists and websites are the two only things on the internet that you can own. Everything else is just rented. Uh, so definitely recommend beginning to build your email list today. It'll pay dividends for you in the future, I guarantee it. All right, awesome. Uh, last and final part of the presentation is engagement, right? So at this point, you've gotten them on your website. Uh, you've gotten them to go and maybe go and buy something, or maybe they haven't bought anything yet. Maybe you captured their email address. So now how can you go and keep them engaged with your brand? And email is the best way to engage customers, hands down, 2021. On average, the e-commerce e e brand gets 30% of their revenue from email. And the fact that it's so cheap, right? You're not paying Facebook. You're not paying these influencers. It's email. We can buy an email service provider and you have no limitations to how many emails you're actually sending. And it attributes to 30% of the revenue for most e-commerce brands. So I'm going to show you, and if you want to screenshot these, totally go ahead and feel free to do it, the five types of emails that you should be sending. First are the pre-sale emails. So this is if you've captured someone's email address and they haven't actually purchased from you yet, and that's going to be the welcome email. And this is where you should go and be talking all about why you started the company, what your how your product is made, what other people are saying about your product, and the steps that I would also do is maybe give them a little bit of a coupon code that expires in 48 hours, so that way you can offer them a coupon code send another email to remind them that the coupon code is going to expire, and then send them one final email saying that, hey, just a heads up, your coupon code is about to expire, so make sure you use it or lose it. Next email are abandoned carts. On average, for everyone who goes and adds a product to the cart on your website, 70% of them leave. I know it seems like a crazy high number, but Google it if you don't believe me. I've done all the industry research at this point. So what you're going to want to do is set up a series of abandoned cart emails to go and try to get someone back on your website and finish in the order because let's face it, it's 2021 and we are just as distracted with our phones and technology as we've ever been before. And the final one is newsletters. I don't have to go into too much detail here, but just know that the more newsletters you send, the more money you will begin making for your store. Now, the two final emails that you should be sending after you go and sell it to a customer. Uh, first of all, repeat customers are nine times more likely to convert and spend three times as much as first time buyers. And so if you're going and sending emails after you've made the order, it's a great idea to go and increase uh, both your profit margin and your overall sales. First one is the purchase follow-up. And this is the email that you can send to them to go and offer uh, the ability to go and get a review or maybe even go and cross sell some other products in your catalog, right? So if you're selling succulents online, now you're able to go and say, hey, looks like you checked out. You might have actually not purchased a, uh, a pot. Uh, make sure to go and get a pot so that way your plant has a place to live. Um, and then the last one is customer win back. And so if you're selling a consumable product 
anything from cereal to uh, you know sports drinks. Um, this is an easy email to go and send uh, 45, 60 days after the sale to go and get someone to go and come back and buy from you again. So just to recap everything, because this was a lot and hopefully you guys learned a lot from it. Uh, awareness, how can you go and get promotion for your product? Hook, how are you gonna convince them to click on that product? Conversion, how are you gonna get customers to trust you and engagement? How are you gonna go and build up your brand before and after the purchase? Thank you guys so much for checking out uh, print, Printful specifically and this conference. Uh, I've been able to say that if you go to privy.com, you can get a 15 day free trial. And if you wanna go and check out more e-commerce tips, I'm sharing them daily on Twitter. It's at C underscore GRO. Thank you guys. Thank you, Connor. That was awesome. I found the section on emails particularly super because I agree completely that they're the gift of online marketing that keeps on giving. So thank you so much for that. That was awesome. Um, yeah, that was Connor Gross from Privy, where he's part of a company that helps over 500,000 e-commerce brands grow their businesses and just get to that next level. Anyway, um, if you have any questions for Connor, remember to type them in the comments so we can uh, bring them back up for the Q&A at the uh, end of the conference. And feel free to leave all, all your thoughts and musings and other feedback on social media using the hashtag Printful Threads. That's hashtag Printful Threads. Go ahead and share. We're ready. We're ready for your feedback. Anyway, now it's time to move on to our second speaker, Jaren Joshu from the Lifehacker Couple YouTube channel. Um, Jaren has a decade of experience under his belt, and he started his e-commerce journey with his wife, Kelsey. Um, and they started their business on Etsy, actually, with like less than 100 bucks, and now they've turned it into a seven-figure profit. So welcome, Jaren. Excited to have you here. Um, I take it that as a YouTuber, talking to people like behind your screen, that's nothing out of the ordinary, right? Nope, nope. I've been talking yeah. about the wonderful gift that is Printful Plus Etsy for about a year and been so blessed to be able to help thousands of people. So. Oh, that's beautiful. All right, yeah. take it away. Okay, awesome. <clears throat> well, welcome, everybody. Um, so excited that you guys are here. Uh, you guys, you know, you're, you're watching this for a reason. Uh, I promise you, you're in the right place at the right time, uh, whether it's myself presenting uh, that implores you to take action and something resonates with you and you create uh, a store or you already have one uh, or some of the other speakers that, you know, get you to take action. But that is the key is taking action. There's beautiful creations that live inside of you and it's time for you to bring them out and to the best of your ability. And I'm also going to show you guys uh, a beautiful way to instead of using uh, Facebook ads or having to open a Shopify store, uh, which I do understand some people are amazing wizards at. Um, we have, me and my wife have Shopify stores as well, uh, but we've also built a really tremendous uh, print on demand business uh, using the channel of Etsy uh, with beautiful Printful. Just a little bit about that. Uh, basically, the native integration uh, became available with uh, Printful and Etsy. Just in the last two years, uh, us being Etsy sellers, we went ahead and had a very good understanding of both the print-on-demand opportunity that was available as well as uh, what's available on Etsy. So uh, when essentially when Printful was allowed to be available on Etsy, uh, they opened up something to the 20 million people that are Etsy Etsy consumers, uh, Etsy customers, and they be prior for the first decade prior to that, it was only things that were handmade. And so now that they are unique items, so meaning your unique creation is now available. So the there's a huge opportunity here, and I'm going to go through these slides, and I'm going to tell you about it. Uh, like I said, me and Kelsey, uh, my wife, uh, we made over a million bucks with it uh, in the first year. We're probably the most successful uh, native integrated Etsy and Printful channel uh, people from <laughs> from essentially right off the get-go. We were doing like over 100,000 a month in the first couple months. So, okay, so coming up to, uh, yeah, so our title here, uh, how to start a successful print-on-demand business with less than $100, right? That kind of sounds like that can't be true. Like, you know, the, what, maybe that's true for me. Uh, you know, maybe that's not gonna be true for you totally understand that. Um, it, you know, it, it, it sounds too good to be true, right? Uh, but I'm very happy to tell you that on our Lifehacker Couple YouTube channel, uh, we've been teaching this for over a year, and we now have thousands of students, uh, over a thousand that are making consistent sales every single day. And 
I'm going to show you exactly how to do that with less than $100. So coming into my next slide here. Okay, so Lifehacker Couple Printful System. So this is a system. Uh, this is not something that, you know, I thought about and just like on a whim. This is not something that, uh, you know, just randomly, you know, a couple of people have had success with. Like I said, we made over a million bucks with the exact system that we're going to tell you about. And we've taught that to thousands and thousands and thousands of people on our YouTube channel. We've been teaching it for over a year now. Um, our Lifehacker Couple YouTube channel has a 40 video course that's 100% free. And it goes through in extreme detail everything that I'm going to tell you. But this is going to be a nice brief overview. And like I said, we have over a thousand students uh, that have used the system. And yeah, we have actually interviews uh, on our YouTube channel, some of the people that have had success. So a couple of them, you know, uh, are making, you know, a few sales here and there. Uh, we got people making $500 extra. And then in some of our biggest success story interviews, uh, stay at home moms, uh, side jobs are, you know, they're using Printful plus Etsy to make over $70,000 a month. So it's not just me. I'm not just, you know, me and my wife aren't, you know, special or unique. Uh, we just, you know, we work hard and there's a beautiful opportunity here and we're going to go into exactly that. So here we go. So the keys to the kingdom. So your kingdom, keys to your kingdom, uh, Printful plus Etsy plus over literally equals infinite money. Literally. So like I said, full plus Etsy plus over infinite money, infinite scalability and almost no risk to you as the creator. So, uh, so Etsy, if you guys haven't heard about Etsy, <clears throat> it's this amazing channel, beautiful channel, uh, has over 20 million people that shop on it, active, active shoppers, uh, just for a little comparison, there's about a hundred million people that shop on Amazon. We all know how good, uh, Amazon is doing and, uh, how many people buy on Amazon, right? So 20 million is, you know, that's, that's not no small amount of customers. And these customers, you have to imagine we're basically in a small gate they weren't allowed to be exposed to say every single product that is available in the world because originally etsy was a channel that was only made for people that made handmade items so handmade items could be things such as candles uh wooden products uh could be handmade t-shirts uh and you know these are you know people physically you know carving etching painting, things of that nature. Well, uh, Etsy had then become a publicly traded channel, a publicly traded channel a couple of years ago. And the CEO, very smart man, was saying, hey, we, we have a great customer base. We have great sellers. We make really unique, uh, amazing items. Uh, why don't we, instead of you know, capping what kind of items we're you know, able to make, why don't we go ahead and open that up to unique items? So now Etsy is a place for unique items uh, and that that now encompasses unique creations that you can bring to this world. So if you're out there and you're like, oh, I don't have a lot of money and, you know, I or maybe, you know, you just want to double down and, and have a, a second uh, revenue stream outside of your Shopify store. If you already have a Shopify store, this is the opportunity for you. So if you're experienced like how me and Kelsey were. Uh, or if you're brand new getting started, this is arguably the best opportunity out there. And the, the reason that this opportunity exists is because in physics, uh, we're, we're dealing with atoms and we're uh, confined by space and time. And we only have, you know, there's only, I can only make, if I'm making shirts physically or I'm printing them or I'm sending them out, uh, there's, there's only so much I can do. Uh, back when me and Kelsey first started, uh, we came up with a funny Christmas sweater back in 2012. We had just heard about Etsy. Uh, I bought, me and her were both very poor. Uh, we had just moved into our first apartment together. And we had we were sitting at Buffalo Wild Wings. And we're like, this is a really funny Christmas sweater. Like, what if we could make this Christmas sweater? And so me and Kelsey went online. We bought a how to screen print kit for like $49.99, which was a ton of money for us. Uh, it came with like three screens and you, you, you made the, the black sheet or like the, the design on a clear canvas. And then you had to like put it in the sun to make the, 
um, stencil come out. So we're like on top of our roof, like trying to make our first stencil with this funny sweater. We completely ruined the first two. And, you know, by the will of God, uh, God bless, we actually made a stencil for the third one. And with this stencil, we had bought some red sweaters uh, from um, like Walmart and Target. And we physically screen printed on our kitchen table, our little kitchen table. And we put it on the channel of Etsy and we had handmade it. And we it sold like gangbusters. And so that was in 2012. And we went ahead and kept printing these by hand. And then luckily we were able to then move to a printer, but we were holding inventory. We had inventory that we had to take care of. We had to have uh, a number of sizes. We had to have a number of colors and we were very limited. Uh, we were, you know, so blessed to continue to, to grow that company and, you know, to keep expanding our, you know, the physical making of it. And so I don't think there was two people in the world that were more appreciative when Etsy went ahead and made the beautiful integration of Printful plus Etsy because we were limited by time and space. And with the Etsy channel, you are now able to make beautiful mock-ups. Uh, we, will, we will talk about how to make mock-ups, but essentially what you're seeing here on the right, uh, this is a mock-up. So that is a a design that was created by a beautiful, amazing creative person like yourself. And it was put on to a t-shirt and it's just a, you know, a PNG of the design and then a mock-up. So this background picture here would be, would be called a mock-up and your print, uh, your design is what you put on top of it. So what you guys, you know, need to understand is that th this person is not holding inventory. Uh, this person does not have any inventory because beautiful printful is going to be fulfilling it. And this is a beautiful, colorful, dynamic, great design. And this is the type of stuff that printful does an amazing job at printing at. Now, to circle back, I have to retell you, remember I was talking about how people handmade it like me, right? So, you know, single colors, if you can see here, uh, like a shirt like this, uh, it's just one color, right? It's just a single color, single color, single color, single color. Those are very limiting, very, very limiting. There is not, um, you know, a lot of beautiful color creations. Because, Like I said, uh, people have to, you know, I have been making this stuff by hand. So if you make the switch to having Etsy plus Printful, you can make beautiful designs. And we're going to go into it in the next slide about how to make those beautiful designs. But you are not going to be limited by inventory. So if you have this beautiful shirt, say this was your creation, you made that shirt, and you sold one your first day, and five the next day, and 50 the next week, and 500 the next week, you are, you're, you're not limited by anything. You're, you, they're going to fulfill everything for you. Now, the key is, this is this is one of the true keys of the kingdom in, in, to your success, is that you have to understand, you know what it costs to put this listing to 20 million customers? 20 cents. 20 cents. So do you realize that for 20 cents, you could be on the shelf of consideration for something like cycling t-shirt? 20 cents. Imagine yourself at Target. And if you were a physical retailer and you imagine the, the logistics to be able to get one shirt on the table at Target and someone's looking, you know, they're in the cycling section and they're looking for cycling T-shirts or funny T-shirts. You know, you, you would never it would just be a logistical nightmare. You'd have to have inventory. You have to front, you know, six to nine months. And you probably still wouldn't be in front of 20 million customers if you were in every single target in the nation. So for literally 20 cents, you can create a beautiful design. Uh, we personally will go over it, uh, use the app over. It's made with over, it's the over app. And uh, like I said, on our Lifehacker Couple YouTube channel, we have a 40 video free course. And my wife literally sat down, had dinner about a year ago, and we had been fortunate enough to make a million over a million dollars with this, and we were like, we need to create a YouTube channel. We had never done YouTube, but we're like, there's mothers and 
you know, and this is before the pandemic. We literally were, it was just divinely written by God that we were supposed to make this because we made the beginning of the course in January, you know, of course, not knowing that this pandemic was going to happen. But her and I sat across from dinner and we're looking at each other and we're like, we can't keep this a secret. Like, you know, this opportunity is huge. Like, what if there's stay at home moms or people that lost their job or someone that needs a second income, like that 500 extra dollars a month or maybe a thousand extra dollars a month would be unbelievably life changing to those people. And her and I were like, let's try to make a YouTube channel and let's try to describe what exactly this opportunity is in a way that people could understand. And the beautiful thing was people did understand it. We have thousands and thousands and thousands of people that have watched those exact videos that are using this system that we're talking about and have had great success. I'm talking about beautiful grandmas. I'm talking about stay-at-home moms. I'm talking about people with two jobs. I'm talking about plumbers. I'm talking about people from every walk of life is doing this and having success. And you might ask yourself, oh, well, what if, what if, I'm too, you know, it's too saturated. I'm too late. I promise you. I had a conversation with a lovely lady last week. She started her store 12 days ago, followed the system, and has over seven cells. And this story is new every single day because the question you always have to ask yourself is in any given year, is there less people buying stuff online? Is there less people shopping? No. And the thing is, it's your beautiful creation. Your unique creation is what is needed to be brought to this world. Someone out there, are you basically have a creation that's going to make them smile. It's going to make them laugh. You have the ability to make stuff that people love. And that's through your artwork and your creation. And if you use Printful, you have unlimited potential. You are not combined. You are not confined by space or time. You, you can list an item for 20 cents. It can have as many colors as your heart can imagine. And they will absolutely be available to 20 million people for the, the wonderful cost of 20 cents. Now, a little technical stuff. And like I said, we go deep into this, but this is just a brief overview. But on our Life Hacker Couple YouTube channel, uh, you can check it out. But uh, SEO is going to be your secret to getting this beautiful creation out, front of out in front of people. So uh, basically, if you're not familiar with SEO, SEO is like the Dewey Decimal System of the internet. And through SEO, uh, query-based engines like Etsy. So uh, if you can see here, uh, we have Etsy. And then, excuse me, I typed in the word t-shirt. And so people are going to be typing in more specific things than t-shirt. They might be typing in cycling t-shirt. So cycling t-shirt is going to be a pretty small niche, but that's also going to allow you to have very unique creations in that small niche. So you're going to have, you could have cycling t-shirts and you can use SEO, uh, which is like for this example, cycling t-shirt and you know, we go go in more depth about SEO, but basically, uh, there's no reason to rewrite the wheel. Uh, this this here is a bestseller, which means that it has sold an immense amount of times, and there these bestseller badges are not given out easily. This has over 20 in the cart, so you can tell that this type of uh, cycling shirt with this type of SEO is being found. So you do your own research and it, it's not about this t-shirt you have to keep in mind some people might think oh like you know do you you're, are you promoting like go out and like make your design similar to this person no 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 that there's no benefit in making a design that's similar to this imagine that you're running a marathon and the person person's already on the last mile and you're starting today if you make a very similar design they already got a bestseller badge. They already have 20 in the cart. They are so far ahead that your, your, your product's going to be insignificant. There's It's never going to rank. So it's about making your own unique creation from your heart and bringing it to this world. Now, this is the beautiful thing. There is people in niches that message us every single day that I don't even know about and didn't even imagine about. There's people making money with uh, funny oil worker shirts. There's people making money... Uh, with obviously cycling shirts, uh, boxing shirts, MMA shirts, uh, turtle shirts, animal shirts. There is unbelievable amounts of potential in niches. And so essentially you're going to bring together your unique creations 
with the things that resonate with you. And those questions are going to be available. You're not going to be limited by inventory or time and space of like how me and Kelsey were when we were hand printing, you know, these little things and we're literally running around. It's like, I think it was Halloween and we're, we're running around. We're at like going to every target because we had sold more shirts than we even had inventory for. And we're trying to find like red extra large, like at target. And then we had to go to like five different targets around our little town. So we can just like find an XL. So then we can go hand print it. No, y- you have unlimited inventory essentially from Printful. I mean, Printful is, is giving that amazing opportunity to you. So you're going to use SEO and you're going to use uh, this, like this particular shirt uh, is available here on Printful. So this this shirt right here is $7.95. So you would then upload your beautiful design. So you have your cycling type of shirt. You upload that bad boy onto here. It will then be natively synced with Printful any time that a wonderful cyclist uh, purchases that shirt, Printful will then uh, start the process of fulfilling it. And this person will then get this beautiful shirt that is like this sent to their house. They're going to take care of the shipping. They're going to take care of the, the printing. And you essentially are just left to be the amazing creator that you are. You're here. You're watching this. You are a creator. You either already are or you have the desire to do it. And this is your, there, there's all this stuff is free. You sign up for Etsy, it's free. You sign up for Printful, it's free. You watch our 40 video course that's helped thousands of people that we made a million dollars with on our Life Hacker Couple channel for free. We don't have courses to sell. We just, it's our, it's us paying it forward to the beautiful, amazing people that have helped us along the way. And you do this and you sign up for all these things. There's no excuse. And so the app that we love to use, a lot of people like Canva. Uh, I don't have a lot of experience with Canva, but you know, just our personal experience is the Over app. So uh, you can find this on your phone. They now have a web version as well. And so you can either design it on the web, uh, which I actually actually like, uh, but I personally have made thousands and thousands and thousands of designs that are available for uh, for. To, to buy and they are fulfilled by Printful and that were designed on over. So that's you know what I can personally speak for. And just to reiterate, the keys to your kingdom is Printful plus Etsy plus SEO, the over app. And that allows you to bring your unique creations to this world. So I implore you to get started. There's, there's literally nothing holding your back. There's no, there's no time to waste. It's a beautiful time. This is the time to get started. And I love you so much. And thank you so much for being here. I can't wait to see your beautiful creations come into this world. God bless you. Thank you, Jaren. That was awesome. Very nice. That was, yay, so exciting. Anyway, good luck to you and Kelsey um, with your business and your channel and everything. And um, I hope that well, if you guys enjoyed what Jaron was just talking about, then feel free to just hop onto his YouTube channel, uh, Life Hacker Couple, and um, just share your love. Thank you, Jaron. Yeah, that was that was very very nice. Um, okay, and if you have questions for Jaron for the Q and A round at the end of today's session. Please make sure to leave those in the comments. We're waiting for those questions. And if you can, if, if you feel like it, you can also share your thoughts and feedback on social media using the hashtag Printful Threads. So yeah, there you go. Comments, Printful Threads, just give us all you got. Um, okay, now it's time to give it over to Jonas, who's going to guide us through the advertising side of things. And uh, Jonas has been building e-commerce websites and brands for the past four years, making over $10 million in revenue. He knows how to both build a strong team and how to keep it fun. Uh, most recently, he built a brand with Printful and sold it. Jonas, where's Jonas? Jonas, hi. Hi. Hey. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you so much. And uh, happy new year, I guess. <laughs> Right. Thank you. You too. <laughs> well, take it away. Yeah. So Jonas here from Denmark in a, a small country in the, <laughs> in Europe. And today I'm going to talk about how to build your brand with Facebook ad and Instagram ads in specifically. So as uh, Mariana mentioned, I've been doing uh, e-commerce for the past four years now. And basically every single day for the past four years, I've been doing um, Facebook ads and Instagram ads. And that's 
mainly the, the the biggest driver for for our brands and and recently we just sold a, a kind of big brand in, with the with printful and today i'm going to talk about that so just let's, let's just jump into the bad side of facebook right away so in 2021 why should we use facebook um, first of all it's super expensive probably the most expensive one of all the the platforms you have in snapchat Pinterest, Twitter, Google, and YouTube. And right now, the latest number I saw that we had around 9.5 million advertisers. So there's a huge amount of competition in uh, in the the advertising space on Facebook. But the good thing is that it's probably the best platform you can advertise on, at least in my opinion. And, and the reason for that is that you can get both the organic side and you can create a lot of trust with having a, a, a cool brand on Facebook and Instagram. And I know a lot of people starting out, they build an Instagram profile and a lot of people start a, um, a Facebook page. And that's exactly what you, you should do when you start your brand or when you want to start advertising. And it's, it's really cool when, when you can build that trust, having a lot of likes and a lot of um, comments on your post and on your page. That just that just builds that trust when 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 someone wants to buy from you. Of course, no one starts out that way, but I know in in the long run, the more you advertise and the more you build your brand, the bigger your pages are gonna be, and the more trust you're gonna get as well. Also, it's the best place to find the perfect audiences for your brand. I mean, Facebook has have around pretty much any interest you can find, and if you have a specific niche, I hope most of you have then the, the audience you can find here are, are just, um, it's super easy to find your audiences. And the, probably the best thing is that it's also a push marketing channel. And we all have these designs, that, the ideas or the, the motives that we want to share, especially with printful products. And exactly, Facebook is the, is the best place to share that because it's all about the creative, right? 90% of your, your success with Facebook and Instagram ads are, come, are going to come from your from your creative and the, the, the creative you can create on uh, on this platform. So let's just get straight into it. I'm going to show you how we're going to we are setting up our campaign setup in a in a very very easy way. So there's not the, there's not that much confusion about it. So first off, we're going to start with the cold. And that's basically your ads going on to new people, trying to get new people to know about your brand and hopefully get some sales on the on the front end. So right away, when they see your website, they come in, they shop. But if not, then we're going to engage them again. So the second campaign is going to be the warm campaign. And that's basically where we retarget people who shared, liked, commented, whatever it is, even smiled at your post. God knows how much Facebook can track these days. And the second one is going to be everyone who's been on your website. So yeah, let's get into it. The first thing we want to do is when you are creating your first Facebook campaign, Facebook and Instagram campaign, it's basically there's 11 types of um, objectives you can, you can choose from. But 99% of the time, you always want to go for conversions. We tested, I tested pretty much everything here. And all the time it ends up with conversion being the winner and conversions basically means a sale right or a add to cart or a new content on your store but it's we're gonna we're gonna go for conversions and then we're gonna optimize for the sales and then we're gonna use something cool it's it's not new it's been here since 2017 but recently facebook started to push this a lot it's called campaign budget optimization and what it does is basically letting facebook handle your budget for you so you got, the only thing you want to do is you want to set a budget and then you want to let Facebook do all the, the different manual bidding for you and, and, and direct your budget to where it makes the most sense. So you don't have to sit there every single day looking at the numbers and move budgets around. So in here, in this case, I'm just going to use $100. That's just an example. You can use whatever you feel is comfortable for you. So don't, um, don't think that you have to spend $100 a day. The next thing we want to do is we want to create an ad set. And as I said before, we're going to optimize for conversions. And that means that basically means, as I said, a purchase or an add to cart or whatever it is. So we want to tell Facebook that the conversion we want to optimize for is purchases. 
And again, we tested every single thing from on the website, from view content to add, add to cart to purchase, and it always pays off just to just to pick the purchase one. Facebook knows exactly who's gonna buy from you on their platform and who is the most willing to buy. So by choosing purchase, your ads are gonna be shown to exactly those people. Next thing we wanna do is we wanna target the customer or find the ideal customer for you. So of course here, you choose your country, whatever, whatever country you're selling in. In this case, I'm just choosing the United States. And I highly recommend that you go 25 plus Unless you're selling something really specific for young people, 25 plus is the ideal age for, for us to really find those people with money to actually buy for. And again, gender. I highly suggest that you go for all genders. I mean, it's, even if you're selling, I mean, it sounds stupid, but even if you're selling like a, a woman product, I mean, probably most of the people in here are selling women stuff. Um, and I do too on my brands. But we still target all genders because you wouldn't believe how many guys like to be buying as well, just for gifts and for their wife, girlfriend, daughter, wherever it is. And if you're selling a men's product, it's the same way around where the women are actually buying. And the cool thing about if you target men, let's say you're selling a women's product, but you're targeting men, well, they are gonna tag each other as well. So if the, men, the guy is seeing it, tagging his wife, and then she goes into your store and actually buy it. The last thing we want to do is we want to choose a or an interest. And as I said before, you can basically find anything in here. So type in your niche, see if you can find some, um, some interests that are really uh, resonating with your niche and think out of the box sometime. I mean, don't, if you're selling a t-shirt, don't type in t-shirts here. You can, but that's just way too specific, right? You want to make sure that you, you target the, the specific niche or if it's a, uh, Christianity or whatever it is. So go go that route and don't just type in niche or clothing. That's or yeah, don't don't just type in um, clothing or a t-shirt. That's 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 way too specific or way too broad. I recommend keeping them really, really big. Remember this campaign is going over trying to 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 gather new customers into your into your store. So I always do 10 million plus, especially in, in, if you're in the US. Of course, if you are in a small country, like here in Denmark, we're only 5 million people in total. So of course we can't go over, over 10 million people, but do big audiences. And that way you will just spread your net much wider and, and get much cheaper traffic as well. Um, the last thing we wanna do is we wanna turn off the reach people here. And Facebook really wants you to do that. I always recommend you turn it off. So again, the next step here on the ad set of the, the entire, entire campaign is basically the placement. And we wanna go for automatic placement. And again, that's Facebook. You don't wanna sit there and mismanage everything just like the, the, the CBO budget. We wanna let Facebook handle the budget, but we also wanna let Facebook handle where, where they're gonna show your ads. And if you, if you try to go to manual placements, you're just gonna sit there and choose Instagram stories and Facebook newsfeed, and it's just gonna be a mess. And Facebook is really, really smart these days, so they're gonna they're gonna find out exactly where the customers are, and then gonna sh they're gonna show the ads on on that specific um, placement. So if it is if it is Instagram stories, well, that's where most of your budget is going to be spent anyway. Again, we wanna optimization. We wanna choose conversions, and then the last thing we wanna do is seven day click. If you're spending under $100 a day, I suggest you go for a seven day click. If you spend more than $100 a day, I suggest you go for one day click instead. The last thing we wanna do is basically put in our visual and brand message, basically meaning the ad that you're gonna show people. So in this example, we are gonna use an image and but you can use image, video, whatever you want to. Um, I will leave that up to you, whatever you, you feel like doing with your brand. Um, you know that much better than I do. And lastly, or final for the ad, you just wanna put in your, your primary text here and your headline and your description. So basically the primary text is just what's gonna be above the ad and keep it short. I mean, I see some people just putting in whole novels of what they can do. And, but with the attention span of people today, it's, it's really important just to keep it really, really uh, concise and clear. 
and let them know exactly what it, this is all about. Remember that 90 to 95% of, of the ad is actually the creative itself. So this doesn't mean that much. So don't start typing in um, 9,000 um, words about your product. It does don't need that at all. With the headline, put in something about your brand and the description is basically the headline with a sub a sub head, headline uh, beneath it. So again, you just want to keep it super, super concise and simple and don't, um, don't write too many words here. Again, last thing, website. I highly recommend you just go for directly the product. I mean, some some of us, we, we tend to know our website really, really well. And there are so many people just sending people directly to the front page of the, of the website. But we have to think that the customers, they have no idea how to navigate on our website. So it's really, really crucial that you either send them to the product page, or at least you send them to the collection page with that product you're showing in your ad at the top of that collection page. And lastly, you want to go for call, the call to action to be shop now. And we do that because we want to prime people to, to shop. So they know that when they're clicking on, clicking on that button, that's going to be shopping time. It's not going to be browsing around or anything else. I mean, that's good too, but you want them to shop. So when they click that also in their head, they are thinking, okay, maybe it's time to shop now. And here you have it, the final result. Of course, don't use this text. This is just a, an example, but put in your brand message here and what it's all about, especially if you can get the customer to say yes in their head. So uh, a, a sentence could be, do you like blah, 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 and a question mark. And if they can say yes to that, well, then you're already uh, on your way to making them click here as well or tag each other or whatever it is. Cool. So now we have, and you can you get this afterwards, so you can see exactly how, how to click on everything, but we have the campaign, we have the ad set, and then we have the ads for that ad set. And right now we have, we made one campaign, one ad set and one ad. And now it's time to duplicate this. As I said before, we're using CBO. So if we're spending a hundred dollars a day on this campaign, well, Facebook is going to distribute that to whatever works, right? So if the this can this asset here is working well, then that's fine. But but Facebook has no other option to, but to use those hundred dollars on this one. So what we want to do is we want to duplicate this. I highly recommend you duplicate it so you have four or five in total. In this case, we're just going to do four in total. So I'm going to duplicate this time, basically meaning plus. Oh, sorry, three times. So I'm basically meaning three times more than this. And we're going to have four ad sets in total. So Facebook will start spending that $100 budget on these four and quickly find out which one is the best and then spend the majority of the money on that one. And you can see it here. You basically get, when you duplicate, you get four exact duplicates of the first one you duplicate. So of course you want to go into each of them and change the interest. And that's basically what we're changing. We're not changing um, different age groups or whatever it is. We want to keep everything the same, the same ad, the same age, all genders, the same country, of course, but we want to change the interest so we can see exactly which interest we're going to, is going to be the winner. And a good uh, side note there is basically have a cheat sheet where you note all of these because if they work now, well, if you're keeping it the same niche, you're probably going to use these uh, these interests again for a very long time. So there you have it, the first campaign here and the biggest one, a cold campaign with a CBO conversion. In this case, we're using $100, but you have four ad sets and it's the same ad in each of them, so four ads as well. So now we want to go over to the next one, which is basically a campaign that's going to target all of your warm leads. And by warm leads, I mean everyone who engaged with your profile on Facebook, on Instagram, commented, liked, shared, whatever it is, but has never been to the website before because we're going to exclude those later on. But the goal here is only to get everyone who liked you in some way on Facebook both your ads, but also just your organic posts. So if you're big, really big or really good at doing organic posts, this is a great campaign as well, because you're going to target those people with conversion ads that's going to make them purchase. So the first thing we want to do when we start this warm 
campaign is basically we have to build something called custom audiences. And if you don't know what it is yet, it's basically a group of people who did an exact thing on your website. So that could be people who added to cart or people who just been on your website or even people who actually purchased from your website. So what you want to do is you want to go to your business manager and up here on the left hand side, you can see there's nine dots. You want to click those and then you want to go to audiences. And here we have a, a few different sources, but in this example, we're going to use the website, then we're going to use the Instagram account, and then we're going to use the Facebook page as well. So if you click them one by one, you can't do it on at the same time. So you have to do it three different times here. But let's start with the Facebook and Instagram because those are the same. So you basically you just want to want to choose an event. So you can choose anyone who just messaged you or uh, people who just like you or whatever it is. I like to just use everything here. So that means that any action they actually took on your on your page, on your Instagram profile or whatever it is, they're going to get captured in this custom audience. And the retention date, you can play around with these, but I also I found that 10 days is really, really good. So we use 10 days and then we just want to give it a name. So both for Facebook and Instagram and then create audience. And then we want to do the same thing for the website. Here, we just want to target everyone or build a custom audience of everyone who actually purchased or sorry, not purchased, been on your website. And again, 10 days and give it a name and press save audience or create audience. So now it's actually time to build the warm campaign. And it's really, really simple. You want to use the same steps as you used before. So you want to create a conversion campaign. You want to use CBO again. And instead of four ad sets, as, as we did in the, the other one, you just want to use two. And that's one ad set targeting everyone who did an action with your Instagram and everyone who did an action with your Facebook account. And you can see here, it's basically the same place where you, in your ads where you use where you choose the, the interest or the targeting for your ad. Instead of going to the interest, you want to go here on the audiences and then you want to choose one ad set for Instagram and one ad set for Facebook. Both of them, we're going to exclude everyone who's been on the website the past 10 days. And that basically ensures that we're only going to hit or target everyone who never been on the website, but took an action on Facebook or Instagram. And this is basically how it looks like. So we have the one campaign, CBO. In this case, we only going to spend $10 because the audience is going to be way, way, way smaller than the ones we use in the cold uh, campaign. And you can use the same ad or you can do another one. And that's completely up to you. Again, what works with your, with your brand or with your strategy, that's fine. And your brand message. But you have the same two ad sets and one ad in each of them. And this is how it look like, looks like. The last thing we want to do, and that's probably the best campaign you're ever going to run. Uh, hopefully it is. This is the, something called dynamic retargeting. And Facebook made a new tool, or not a new tool. It's been here for a few years now. But basically, they have something called dynamic retargeting. And the cool thing about this is that it is dynamic. So it will basically find out what product the customer who've been on your website, exactly what products they looked at. And then they're going to show that customer those products, exactly those products again. Beforehand, we, before we had to do it manually. So we had to kind of pick the ones we wanted to show. But now we can just basically have a store with a thousand products and no matter which of the, those products the customer looked at, they're going to be shown to them directly on Facebook and Instagram again. And you can see here the numbers for this one. We've been running it for, for some time now and it took us, took me about 10 minutes to set up and haven't touched it since. So we spent around the $33,000 and revenue over $200,000 just for, for this 10 minute work and of course, some time to, to run. If you use Shopify, I highly recommend you use this app called Flexify because you need a link from your Shopify store to your Facebook catalog. You can kind of create a catalog with all your product inside of Facebook, but you, you need that link and this app is free and you can just find it on the app store. And in there, there's a tutorial, tutorial to actually how to actually link it to, to your Facebook page. So it's super, super easy. 
if you use other platforms like WooCommerce or Wix or wh whatever you're going to use, I'm pretty sure they have the same app. So just go ahead and, and reach out to uh, customer support for those apps or those uh, platforms. To create the dynamic retargeting ad, it's a little bit different. So almost the same, but a little bit different. So in this case, we want to, instead of going for conversions, we just want to go for catalog sales instead and right below it. We want to use the same st uh, strategy with CBO. So we want to let Facebook distribute the budget where it's, it makes the most sense. And again, use a smaller budget. I highly recommend you use around 10 to 20% of your, the, the money you spend on the front end on your retargeting because the, the audience are going to be really, really small compared to the audience that you have on your front end. And when you create the, the dynamic retargeting ad, it's, it, you can use it both to find prospecting ads, but you can also use it to retarget. And we always just use it for retargeting because there's better options to, to do the, um, the prospecting. So make sure that you, you choose the retargeting set, setting here. And you just want to make two ads, just like we did with the warm campaign. We just want to make one ad where we target in everyone who viewed the, a product, but haven't purchased or added something to cart. And then we want to make another ad set here with everyone who've been adding something to the cart, but never purchased. And this one is going to be your best ad set that you can possibly run because anyone here who added something to the cart, they are really, really primed to buy. Maybe just something happened like, a, I don't know, a kid wanted some attention or the, the boss stepped into the office or whatever it is. So these people are so close to buying. So you really want to make sure that you are running this at all times. And same settings as before, we want to go for automatic placements. And again, make sure that you go for the purchase conversion event. That's super key because sometimes Facebook will change this to a landing page or a link clicks or whatever they, they want to do. So make sure that this is always set to the conversion event of the purchase. Go for seven days again. And the last thing we want to do with this is actually just creating the ad. So turn this dynamic format off this is um, something that Facebook created a few months ago, maybe a year ago. Uh, I, I tried it a lot of times and never, never really worked. We always just want to go for the carousel. And the carousel, simple as it is, it's just a carousel on Facebook. You've probably all, all seen them. And the cool thing about this is that it's dynamic. So you, you don't really have to do anything. The only thing you have to do is choose carousel and then put in a text here. So because it's dynamic, Facebook is going to import the name of the product, the picture of the product that you have on your website, and also the price of the product. So you can just showcase those on your catalog or on your DPA, the, the dynamic product ad. And then you just want to put in some text here. And the only thing you really want to do is basically just find out why people are not buying from your store. I mean, they've been on your website already. So either they, are, they don't trust you, and that could be if you don't have any reviews or whatever it is, or they just think the price was too high, whatever it is. So find out, see if you can find out exactly why people are, are leaving your store. And you can even split test these two, um, two creatives here. So you can try one with discount and one with, uh, with more trust, promising, hey, we have uh, fast shipping, we have good customer service, we have whatever it is it takes. So, so you can see which of those works the best and then start running that. The, the one that works the best. So this is basically how it looks like when it's all combined. In this case, we're just running a few extra cold campaigns here with different creatives. But you can see the structure here. We have the cold, then we have the warm, and then we have the hot. And it, we spent some money here. And luckily, we, we made more money than we spent. And you can see the, the return on ad spend here. That's probably the most important metric you're going to find on, on, on Facebook. So we have the cold audiences. They have uh, the lowest ROAS. That's obvious because it's cold traffic. And cold traffic doesn't convert as good as, as engaged people or people who, who already know you. And then we have the warm campaign here with a little bit higher ROAS. And then, of course, we have the hot DPA dynamic retargeting ad here with the highest ROAS. And this is basically how it should look like if you set it up the way I suggest you, you should set it up. And it's really, really simple to navigate. 
I've seen so many accounts, Facebook accounts, where you have 10, 30 different campaigns running at the same time, and it's just a nightmare to navigate in. So just make it simple for yourself, for yourself. As a store owner or as a business owner, we have a lot of other stuff to do than, than sit, sitting here watching our campaigns every single day. And just to talk about the long-term game of Facebook, because it is going to be a bit hard from the start. As I said, it's the most expensive platform, probably, uh, of all of them. But you have to remember that people are people are buying, seeing your brand for the first time on, on Facebook. They might buy, they might not, they might come back again later on. But in this case, this is this is one of, um, of the stores and 26% of people are coming back again. And it's not just once. You can check here, we have a customer who's been shopping with us for 40 times now. She placed 40 orders. And she spent over six thousand or almost six thousand dollars. I mean, that's that's almost uh, true love, in uh, in my eyes. So remember that people are coming back again and again and again, and especially if you're having a good product, as you 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 do have with Printful, and you do good customer service and you make them happy. It's just a long term game, and the more you advertise and the more customers who's coming back again and again and again, that's just gonna create that snowball effect where, where it gets easier, both with your Facebook ads, but also with your emails, also with your organic posts, everything, basically. I mean, this customer, almost every single time we send out a campaign with email or we start a new, uh, launch a new design or whatever it is, she's, she's the first one to, to shop with us. And we have so many others um, coming back again and again and again. That's it for me, guys. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you can use, can use this for for something in your own Facebook structure. And um, yeah, thanks for listening. Thank you, Jonas. That was super thorough. That was awesome. And actually, we got a bunch of nice comments already flowing in, uh, qu comments and questions such as, does this ads guy have a course, please? So you already have fans. <laughs> That's wonderful cool. to hear. <laughs> uh, awesome. So if you have any more questions for Jonas, uh, please leave them in the comments and don't forget to mention that they're for Jonas uh, and you can also go ahead and uh, share your feedback and takeaways on Instagram, Twitter or any other social media using the hashtag Printful Threads. But now let's take a look at what you've been posting and sharing so far, shall we? Basically you guys have been sending us love and that is just, that is just lovely you guys, thank you. For, for all those beautiful vibes you're sending our way. But I guess it's a thanks to Printful, but the real thank you is to our dear speakers, to Connor and, and Jaron and Jonas. So this is for you. This is for you guys. All this love sending your way. Thank you, guys. All righty. Um, so up next, we have a fireside chat with the founders of Jolie Noir, uh, Kim and Keandra, moderated by Ariana O'Dell, a contributor to Fast Company and a Printful store owner herself. Um, the topic of their conversation will be five easy steps you can take to start a successful online apparel brand using POD. And hopefully, it'll inspire many of you to take that first step yourselves. So ladies, wonderful to have you all here. Beautiful. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Doing well. Can't wait to see what you got what you got for us. So. Great. Um, my name is Ariana Odell and I'm a contributor with Fast Company where I write about my entrepreneurial journey and I also run an e-commerce store with Printfold called Ideas by Ariana. Awesome. Hi, I'm Kim. I'm Keandra and we are the owners of Jolie Noir. <laughs> It's great to chat with you guys. You've made quite an impression online with all of the great items you've been able to create with Printful. And when I picked my name, I picked something very basic. I called my store Ideas by Ariana. <laughs> you guys were more, a little more thought into the branding. So I was wondering if you could explain to everyone where, really where the name came from, where your inspiration behind your brand even started. Yeah, so um, it's actually something that's kind of dear to us because um, Jolie Noir simply means pretty black in French. And uh, Keandra and I, we are from Louisiana. So that's kind of where that French um, portion of our name came from. We wanted something that meant something to us. Um, obviously, we didn't want to be super, um, you know, open or we wanted something that was going to cause a conversation. Um, so uh, we are about women's empowerment in general. But our sub 
culture and our niche that we um, decided to focus on is um, Black women, because obviously we're Black women. And uh, we definitely see and notice the need for um, the encouragement, um, because we do believe that in order to be um, a success or a, a viable part of society, that it's important to build at home, basically, mm -hmm. if you will, right. um, and then go out and participate in society as healthy human beings. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. And I, I love the name. I love the branding. And I'm curious how you guys got started with your store. Um, for some people, it's a combination of maybe they wanted income. Um, for me personally, it was because I wanted to express my creativity online. But why did you guys get started? What was the inspiration and initial kind of oomph into the digital world? Yeah, really, it was Kim's idea. <laughs> um, we've always like wanted to do the whole um uh, well, just having the whole, line. yeah, a, a line and, mm -hmm. you know, having a business and things like that. But um, we started back in, geez, 2009 um, as a brand um, and the brand was called the Red Glasses mm -hmm. Sisters. And we had to rebrand ourselves because that wasn't, you know, it wasn't really? for us. <laughs> and, um, you know, we weren't really committed to that in the first place. And so um, it was her idea. And as soon as we rebranded, she thought that it would be a really great idea to check out Printful. And, uh, you know, she did the research and um, I mean, it was just, it was a really good fit for us. Um, we didn't want to have to pack anything in our home. Didn't want to have to, you know, have our own um, space to, you know, house things or, um, you know, things like that. And so yeah. she thought it would be a good idea to, you know, to research and things. Okay. Yeah, because um, with the um, with the print on demand um, company, we thought that for, um, of course, for fulfillment purposes, mm -hmm. that it was important because um, she's a singer and songwriter. I do wardrobe styling, so this is not the only thing that we do. We have very busy lives, things that keep us pretty busy. Um, so we needed something that was going to get us products yeah. low cost um, because we already had a lot of our resources pulling on different sides. So um, we needed something that was like, you know, everybody said, you know, starting up very low um, and then also very low risk. Um, we mm -hmm. live in an apartment. So um, it's, it was kind of um, it, we thought that it would be too <laughs> tasking to have to store you know, and have more appear. houses and yeah. things like mm -hmm. that in our own apartment. So um, we even decided to um, take advantage of the principal warehousing um, space. So, yeah, we have, um, I think, pretty much every no, not everything that Printful offers, but we have um, partaken in a lot of <laughs> offerings. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's always exciting when there's a new product. Anytime I get an alert, I'm like, ooh, can I, can I add this into my store? Um, and it's, it's pretty easy to do that. And I like what you mentioned about why you actually chose to go down the print-on-demand route. I know in the past, I when I was looking at starting a store, I would order things off of Alibaba that I thought I could resell and I'd get get something two, three months later and it was a piece of garbage. Did you guys have that experience testing out products and different types of companies? So, you know, actually Printful was our um, our start mm -hmm. for, um, for this particular business. Printful was our start. We knew that we wanted to sell apparel. We knew that um, eventually we would sell more than apparel. And so that's kind of why we started doing the warehousing to kind of get our feet wet. Um, we've even um, sourced locally some pieces um, that, you know, maybe Printful didn't have the specific color or, you know, a style. Um, mm -hmm. So we didn't want to limit ourselves on the business side. But, no, we um, we didn't um, actually go out to, like, an Alibaba or anything like that because um, we kind of knew from our previous business mm -hmm. of, <laughs> about, you know, how mm -hmm. that can, you know, be its own, you know, challenge. So we didn't want to... Uh, we didn't want to do that for this business. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And I love print on demand too, just because of the ease of use. Um, I tell my friends, my family to sign up for it. It's so easy. It's so great. But even though there's so many great things about just running a business in general, there's also the late night crying, which you guys might have experienced. <laughs> I'm curious, um, what kinds of challenges have you guys run into with your business? Um, uh, for me personally, it's when there's a lot of customers complaining at a certain time. How do you handle things like that? What What are the biggest struggles and how have you guys found that you've been able to overcome them? I know for me, probably one of the biggest struggles is the uh, the whole like customers mm -hmm. complaining about different things. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that um, for both of us, what's really strengthened us in that area is 
is, is Kim again. Um, <laughs> uh, she started off um, a couple of years back doing a, a retail yeah. and um, it's been really easy learning from her um, on how to, you know, just do really well with uh, customer service mm -hmm. and, um, you know, helping people with, with problems. You know, yeah. we're here to serve and, um, you know, it, it's, it's not a problem to uh, help them with their, their issues and things like that. But yeah. it can be tasking at times. <laughs> <laughs> Being a new business, you know, because you are still, um, we are actually um, a year and a half really into our business. And so being a new business, we have not had a lot of um, issues in comparison to, you know, like what we could have had. Mm -hmm. um, of course, the pandemic was in 2020 and still now. So obviously <laughs> that had, had its challenges. Uh, so um, it's it was um, interesting to <laughs> grow a business in that time um, and still, you know, continue on. But um, the biggest challenge I would say is probably finding our customer. It's no different than anybody else, finding our customer and actually um, getting those Facebook ads out to them, learning Facebook ads all on its own. I wish that I had a Jonas right. <laughs> <laughs> or a Connor or a Darren, you know, at that time, you know, when we were learning the business, um, it, cause you know, like YouTube, of course it's so, it's a wealth of information, but it's also, it can, you can kind of get a get little lost. You know, lost in it and not know who to trust or what information to trust. Cause there's so many different opinions and outlooks on it. So, um, just kind of dialing down, honing in on what information fits for your business, because every business is not the same. You do have businesses that do drop shipping that work from Ali, you know, Express or Alibaba or something like that. And it really doesn't fit this particular model. So um, that is that was definitely a challenge is, you know, finding our customer, making sure our audiences um, were aligned to find our customer. Um, and then we ran into some um, some snags with influencers. So we had an expectation. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Started. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's, you know, it's the thing. It's like ninety nine percent of influencers are amazing, but there is that one percent that's a little yeah um, right. Because yeah. <laughs> you know we both have dealt with um we both have done influencer work, so we're mm -hmm. kind of familiar with the space. But you know, as far as being a business working with influencers, it was a little different. We had expectations that larger influencers would yield you know, higher results yeah. as far as, um, you know, um, conversions for sales. Um, not realizing that there was a lot of wealth in what they did bring, which was either f uh, followers or just mm -hmm. brand awareness, period. So to just be sat in front of their audience was actually um, something that we could, mm -hmm. yeah, it was actually something we could benefit from because they, their customer, their person either became a customer or they just became aware and they could pass the information on to someone else. Now we did run into an issue where an influencer just didn't what do what we paid them to do. So, mm -hmm. you know, you have both of those sides. So it's all just a learning curve. But yeah, I would say those are definitely the biggest uh, challenges <laughs> that we face. <laughs> yeah, definitely. With the pandemic and customer challenges, it, it's not an, always easy to run a business, especially when sometimes people don't realize there's an actual person on the other end of your store. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, was there any challenge that was particular to the pandemic that you had seen arise this year that you hadn't seen in previous years? Or was it just the same challenges, but <laughs> magnified? Well, um, I think it was really the customer service piece. Mm -hmm. um, like my sister said, we um, tried to navigate that and it was really managing it, you know, cause we are kind of anal and we wanted to watch every <laughs> every point of the customer service piece because we knew that you know of course um there were going to be slower fulfillment times slower shipping times and so we wanted to kind of uh, so what we did was we created templates to really um you know help with the efficiency so help with time for us and then to just create consistency because if we couldn't have consistency with what we you know, new for Printful as far as uh, fulfillment time speeds and shipping and things like that, we had to have consistency somewhere. So yeah. we had to pivot very fast and we had to learn to be super diligent with consistency. So, yeah. 
Mm -hmm, definitely. And one thing that I wanted to get your feedback on is just different strategies that people can use to market and sell in their store. For me personally, one thing that's worked really well is has been press outreach and optimizing SEO tags. But for me personally, um, influencer campaigns haven't worked. I've thrown a bunch of money at that. Um, a lot of social ads haven't worked for me. Um, yeah. I work with a lot of clients that they say, what's what's the strategy? What's the golden ticket? But I think it really is a lot of testing. So I'm curious from your perspective, <laughs> what you've tried, like what worked, what didn't work? I'm sure everyone would love to not waste their money as well. <laughs> you know, it, it's a funny thing because um, you have to kind of have a different outlook on it. Um, and that's really what we had to do. We had to kind of shift our perspective on it. There's no sure method. Yeah, there's no sure method. I was actually talking to another friend who's in business and I was saying, saying that it is about testing. Everything is about testing and you want to take as low of a risk as possible. Mm -hmm. That will give you the highest payoff, but you are definitely in business. It's all about a risk. Um, everything, even with a print on demand business, it's a risk, you know, so you do have to take a chance. So you may send a free shirt. So instead of paying an influencer, think about looking at a micro influencer, someone who's looking to just get their feet wet. Right. You know, you may not get, um, you know, the how many ever, you know, followers to, you know, follow you or to be in front of those people. But there, you know, there's power in even little numbers because mm -hmm. you're 3000 follower influencer may have um, a thousand people who come to shop with you, whereas your 300,000, you know, uh, follower uh, influencer may not even have enough influence over right. one. Oh so, you know, you kind of have to look at it like that. And also mm -hmm. it's about social proofing too. So it's not just about, um, you know, getting the sale always, you are getting content that you don't have to necessarily pay for. So where you would have to pay for a huge, you know, Nike has like million dollar ad campaigns, <laughs> they have, you know, where they can do a million dollar shoot and, you know, things like that. We don't have that luxury. So when you want to see your products in the Bahamas, you send your product to the Bahamas and you tell that person, hey, can you get some, you know, pictures on the beach, you know, whatever, whatever you're selling. So, um, you know, you kind of work it out that way and you just kind of look at it different and don't look at it so much as a loss unless they just don't do what it is that they're supposed to do. <laughs> but if, they, if you get something, if you get rich content, evergreen content, then you will always be able to benefit from that. Yeah, definitely. I completely agree. And one thing that's been great about this conference so far is there's been so much good advice for um, entrepreneurs who've been doing this for a while. I've been learning things, but there's also a lot of aspiring entrepreneurs and people who just started a business. Um, my younger brother actually last week started his own print on demand store, shouted out the pause project, but he's already had six sales. So for aspiring entrepreneurs like him that are watching, what would you recommend he do in his first couple of weeks, his first couple of months? Um, and anybody who hasn't started a store, what, what do you recommend they can do to just get the ball rolling and start start creating a print on demand store overnight, yeah. essentially? So, you know, of course we have our five steps. <laughs> so I would definitely say to um, that you if you're if you haven't started yet, you would definitely want to pick out what it is that you want to sell. So your product and you want to start with your niche at least. Mm -hmm. um, so for us, what we did, we um, sat down, we said, okay, this is what we want our customer to look like. Mm -hmm. This is who our customer is. She's a combination of us. We have basically a mood board. Yeah, like a mood board. We mm -hmm. sat down and created a mood board. So it was that we were like, okay, we know that we want to sell apparel. So then what do we want to sell? It, initially, we started out with our logo. Um, we found that that didn't do too well, <laughs> do too well, um, because nobody recognized the right. brand name. <laughs> it's in French. We're in the U.S. <laughs> it didn't click until after we got in there. So, um, so we um, decided to branch off into because we also saw that um, we, while we were looking in stores, we saw that there were not very many tees that were that represented us so there were graphic tees with plenty of non-black women beautiful we bought those but we wanted something that also represented us too in size as well as you know in the um, images so we um when we went to go and look for the person that we wanted to target we thought about all of those things you know like who is she where does she shop what does she do? Is she college educated? Mm -hmm. So those are the things that you want to look at when you're thinking about your niche um, and when you're picking out your products as well. So um, I would say that would definitely be the first step is picking out the niche.
Mm -hmm. And I would agree with that um, just based on my own store. I made a store full of things that I thought were funny and turns out a lot of other people don't like it in my store. Like there's a possum mask that's my number one seller. So you really just never know what niche is going to be successful. Um, But one thing to touch on was probably what everyone, the burning questions I get a lot, a lot of other sellers get online. Whenever you see a video of I'm doing great with print on demand, people want to know, like, how are your sales? Um, Do you feel comfortable sharing any of those numbers or what types of markups are you having on your products? Yeah, so um, we do um, a 50%, about a 50% little give or take, 50% markup. We actually have um, initially, like I said, with our logo uh, back in 2018, when we did our soft launch. We um, did a run with our uh, logo sweatshirt and we only sold like 20 sweatshirts. <laughs> only 20 sweatshirts. And we did target our friends and family because we didn't know where else to go. Yeah. Um, but uh, it didn't do very, um, do very well. So we got discouraged. We set it down, <laughs> set down the business, and we didn't come back until May of 2019 to really strongly give our business an effort. Right. And so ever since uh, t- the July of 2019, when we did what we consider our hard launch, that's when we really got legal. So that's 2019, mm-hmm. our first start of the very first year, because that's when our state recognizes our business, mm-hmm. because that's when we actually put in everything that we had, you know, started putting everything we had mm-hmm. And so um, ever since then, we have um, gone up 200 percent from the you know, time we first opened to, you know, uh, the middle of 2020. And um, it's been going up ever since. Yes. Yep. And so, nice. yeah. Yep. <laughs> I see you guys rocking the hats. Um, I'm curious which products are actually selling the best for you guys, because sometimes for me, it's it's something unexpected. Earlier in the year when the masks, the mask heyday, mask boom, those were popping off for me. And now sales are flat. I'm yeah. not selling many masks, but what right now is your hot item? Is it the hats, the teas, something else? So because it's winter, yeah, it's winter. Yeah, so it is, it's been pretty consistent with seasons. So in summer, it's t-shirts and um, in the winter, it's sweatshirts. Mm-hmm. And to touch on that, do you create specific products for different holidays? Do you have any Christmas themed items? Or I know Valentine's Day is coming up. Are, are you catering your marketing campaigns to that type of audience and that type of demographic? Uh, yeah, basically, um, well, actually we just had um, our holiday sale. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course we released holiday sweatshirts as well. Um, so yeah, we are definitely about um, the whole like holiday, you know, situation, just making yeah. sure that you know, we're a part of all of those things. Um, you yeah. Know. yeah, we don't new, normally do like Valentine's Day and things like that because there's just not really enough time. Um, given that the fulfillment time frames are, you know, um, two to seven business days, we like to, it's not enough time between Christmas and February for us, in our opinion, to be able to really give it a really good shot. Um, so what we do is kind of spin off, like if we have something like we have a girlfriend sweatshirt that, um, is mm-hmm. a that you can, you know, show love to your girlfriends and, you know, so you can get that for them. And so using something that we already have and just kind of putting a spin on it in our email newsletter, on our social media, things like that. Um, but we do have what we are um, calling our unity collection because, um, within the black culture, I'm not sure if you're familiar, but there has been a lot of, um, issues with colorism. So mm-hmm. that's um, different light, dark, you know, kind of um, issues. And so to bring together um, our, to show our differences as well as celebrating them, um, we do have different shades of nudes that are coming up. Um, but that will be, um, it's not really a holiday thing, but we do, uh, those are the kinds of things that we do for our collections. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that's great. And one thing that I did like about your store is that you were very inclusive of all types of sizes. And why do you think it's important for a brand to not just think about one demographic, but make things accessible to all? It doesn't mean you have to pick a completely different niche, but anyone with similar interests, no matter what the color of their skin or their size, they should have products available to them. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we we know as well as anybody that representation matters, yeah. you know, whether black or plus size yeah. um, to be able to know that somebody took the time out, a, a company mm-hmm. took the time out to think about me and my size or, you know, me and my, my color, whatever it is. 
that's that's really great. Yeah. And uh, it makes me want to shop with you. Yeah, definitely. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the plus size market is so wide open. Yeah, it is so wide open. Plus size women, we are looking for highly fashionable pieces yeah. still um, in 2021 <laughs> that we um, can enjoy to wear. And that looks like something that you could wear or, you know, someone else that's, you know, smaller. We want to see the same styles offered throughout. We don't want necessarily something that's quote unquote unique for us. We want to be able to, especially something as simple as sweatshirts and t-shirts, yeah. you know, those are very universal. So um, that is the number one piece of feedback that we've gotten um, is that they people are excited that we mm -hmm. offer, you know, we offer up to a 6X. So whatever the highest size that Printful offers, we, we have it and it moves. Mm -hmm. um, so that is just, you know, just true because we have two actually uh, plus size influencers that purchased from us mm -hmm. that really helped our business um, because they also shared uh, word of mouth. They're two um, ladies that we have had the privilege to build rapport with. One is Essie Golden, the other is Alyssa um, of My Stylish Curves, and they are testaments. They have the biggest influence over their audiences mm -hmm. because. They know how to find those pieces that, you know, work and that are super fashionable. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's really important to incorporate plus sizes and not just go up to 3X because everybody's not, you know, wearing a 3X, you know. Um, I think that it really puts your brand ahead, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, and that's speaking from a plus size person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And it's funny, I didn't even realize that since I had started my store, Printful had added all these different options that you actually can't offer that as a seller now. So I thought that was fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one thing too is the print on demand landscape has changed so much since I started my store. Mm -hmm. I started my three years ago and I remember I would, I would hire a photographer and spend mm -hmm. thousands of dollars to get these mock-ups and maybe people looked at them or maybe they didn't, but now there's so many resources out there for people to easily make a mock-up, easily make social media graphics. Um, what types of resources do you guys personally use? So we do, we try to use um, like different mock-up um, resources, but we do like the um, printful mock-ups because what we do, our site has um, the mock-ups. What we're doing is working on getting ph photographs because a lot of our stuff is going to stay on our website for a really mm -hmm. long time. Um, so that's why we're making the investment for that. We just have to have the time <laughs> for it. Um, but yeah, so, um, but what we do is we will do a lifestyle shoot um, for ours and then um, put that like on our social media and do like a um, highlighted campaign on the front page of our website. And then throughout, you'll see more of the flat mock-ups just for a cleaner look um, and just more consistency. Mm -hmm. And have you guys used Place It personally? Or that's one that I discovered that's like my holy grail, but I'm just curious what everybody else is using. You know, we've used Place It, but um, for us, Place It, it just doesn't um, give you the, it doesn't give you what Printful can give you because Printful, they have the scaling down. Mm -hmm. And so with place that you have to kind of scale it and you have to like for the leggings, it's kind of difficult to get the leggings on there. So I was just like, okay, we're just gonna go to <laughs> just keep with Printful um, mm -hmm. for now until we are able to really just get in there and get everything photographed and, you know, on our yeah. site. And that is true that there's been so many changes to even just print full as a platform with new products and new features, which is great. And the ease of use. One thing I love too, is just their customer service is very responsive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <When> you, yeah. <laughs> I think that's really important. So when someone's yelling at you, you want to be able to resolve the issue as quick as possible, and satisfy that customer. So that is nice. They even have live chat. Um, yeah. But we're almost coming up on our time limit, but I was just curious um, if you guys had one, if you could tell yourself one piece of um, feedback that you have now or one lesson you've learned, tell your earlier selves, what would it be? Uh, stay accountable to the work. Yeah. We spent a whole year um, being, uh, I guess, kind of negative and, you know, not really focusing on what we could accomplish. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until our mom um, kind of like, you know, nudged <laughs> us in the direction and was like, y'all got to come on and do this. And, you know, we got up and we're like, okay, yeah, we'll do it. And uh, every day you have to dedicate yourself to doing the work, um, no matter what it is. And, you know, as long as you're continuing on in that, then, you know, 
things will, will happen. You'll have really great results, but you got to do it every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I would agree with that too. Um, I, at this point, I've probably tried to help around 300, 400 people make a store. And do you want to know how many people actually did it? <laughs> and then the people that actually stuck with it after that. Um, wow. So it's maybe two, three people out of all those people. I love talking about print on demand, so I'll do it all day long, but nobody really puts the, they'll start the store and they'll see, oh, I only had like one, two sales and then, then they quit. But my store, I've been working on it five, 10 minutes every single day for the past couple of years and seeing the results. So I completely agree with you guys that you can sometimes, this was a hard year, get stuck in a negative mindset, but just even little progress every day can yeah, pay, sure. dividends, pay dividends. Um, um, in inspiration and money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but I think we just had our time limit, but it was great chatting with you guys. And where can everybody find you on social media? Yeah, so um, you can find us at JolieXNoir. Uh, I'm sorry, JolieXNoir Apparel on Instagram and JolieXNoir on Facebook. Perfect. And my store is Ideas by Ariana and Ariana Odell on Instagram. So always happy to chat print on demand. I could talk about this all day long. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that was awesome, you guys. Thank you so much, Ariana and Keandra and Kim. That was very, very nice. Seriously, you guys. And I think we would um, enjoy listening, hearing you guys talk about POD all day long. So, I mean, it's a win win situation. Um, and, uh, but don't go anywhere because we're ready for our QA and it's time to get everybody back on the screen. I hope your camera ready and uh, ready to take those viewer questions because uh, people have been sending in a lot of good stuff. Uh, one thing that I wanted to ask straight away was for Ads Guy, Jonas. <laughs> Do you King have Jonas. a course coming King up? Jonas. The team Sorry? want to know. Do you have a course coming up on uh, Facebook ads? Yeah, two weeks, then it's done. So hit me up on, uh, on email, Instagram or Facebook, and then, uh, yeah. I'll let you know. All right, we'll share those, I'm be his first sure review. those deets so all those people interested in your um, Facebook intel will know where to find you. But okay, let's start with those questions, shall we? God, I gotta do a bit of a scroll here. Let's see now. Okay, so the first one is, it's like a, a two-parter. I will direct this to both um, Jaron and Connor because it's like, kind of related, but the, this question comes from several people actually. It's all about how to get that first sale. So we talked about mm. milestones and you know how to get to that milestone, but how to get to that first sale. Maybe Jaron, you could go first. What's your take on that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So a uh, great question. First one is definitely the hardest, right? It's uh, easier to get the 100 sale than the first one. Um, obviously, I'm a big fan of if you're just starting out using SEO. So SEO and uh, a lot of designing. Basically, just keep swinging the bat. Uh, we talked about the and there's a number of other niches that you know that are available. You literally, if you, I mean, seriously, if you're motivated, you can literally open an, an Etsy store tonight and have stuff on there. Uh, it's, it's as simple as opening up an email address. Uh, you could whip up uh, a design on the over app and you could have a thing for sale. Like, I mean, you can do it in 10 minutes if you wanted and have your first shirt up. And and the good thing about, you know, with the Etsy channel and SEO, you type, you can just type in t-shirt and the stuff that's on the front page is on the front page because the SEO is selling. It's a query based engine that's making a lot of money. And so anything that when you go to Etsy, type in t-shirt and anything that's on those first couple of pages, niches that might resonate with you. Uh, their SEO blocks are stellar, and that's why they're up there because it's a natural selection engine. The best stuff filters to the top and has sales. So you have SEO literally just handed to you. So put your unique creation with using Printful and uh, have that bad boy up and literally just keep swinging the bat until you get that first sale. You know, it might take 10 listings, it might take 20, it might take 100. Um, but you will 100% get it. And, you know, once you get it, like, you can't unget it. Like, the toothpaste doesn't come doesn't go back in the tube. Like once you that first sale, it's easier to get the fifth sale and so on and so forth. But yeah, really about just staying consistent. So. Mm -hmm. All right, I see some nods. 
So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and for Connor, um, on the topic of this like cold start, how to get that first something, um, the related question here is uh, about reviews, how to get that first review from your customers. Yeah, so there's a handful of different Shopify apps specifically out there if you are selling on Shopify. Um, I know some of them that are pretty popular are Luke's. Uh, that's the one that I've used on a few of my stores along with Judge Me um, are both pretty popular apps. Um, and so what they do is basically just automated email. So once you go and actually sell the product, you can go and schedule it. So that way it says, you know, hey, 14 days after they go and open the product or, or the product that's delivered, uh, send this email and go and request for a review. And then you can even go and program it to do like, hey, send a reminder one if they didn't submit a review. Um, and the best part about the reviews too is that you actually get a ton of like UGC, uh, which basically just stands for like user generated content, um, which for my experience has always performed extremely well. Uh, anytime you want to go and turn around and run ads, um, just having an actual like unboxing video or customer, you know, showing your product off in their home uh, has always been pretty effective for for some of my brands. All right, thanks, Connor. I hope you guys are taking notes. Some good stuff here, okay. Um, the next one is for Jolie Noir. This is a good one. Um, how many items did you find you had to have on your store before people really started getting interested? That's a really good question um, because that's our mom is our other partner, our other business partner. So um, we used to have <laughs> arguments, if you will, about how much to have on the store. She thought we should have very full. We just thought that you should have, you know, whatever items, items, yeah. you know, whatever items you have. So um, we had three items initially, and then we just kept growing as we uh, went. It wasn't actually until we started doing our illustration mm -hmm. images um, or uh, graphic keys that mm -hmm. we really started taking off. So it wasn't how much we had on the website that was as important as what we had on the website. And so we had two of those, and both of those were very successful. Mm -hmm. And actually, the one of them is our, still our best seller to date. Mm -hmm. All right. I have a question, actually. Could you guys tell me about the designs you're wearing right now? They're okay. very, very cool. Yeah. I, a, in the way, sort of. Do you yes. mind? <laughs> oh, thank you. Yes. <laughs> Beautiful. So these, are printable. <laughs> these are printed by Printful. Uh, let's see. So this is our Coral Beauty. And mm -hmm. um, he hasn't come out yet, so we are wearing things that haven't come out yet. Um, actually, this one will be released um, next week. Next week. Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> Exclusive yeah. sneak peek. Yeah. <laughs> we come up with all of the ideas. And, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, looking great, guys. Thank Thanks. you. Um, this one is for Ariana. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about influencers? The question goes, I have had a hard time contacting YouTube influencers. How do you contact them? What would you say? Yeah, definitely. So I feel like there's a lot of different ways to be spooky and find influencer emails online. Um, first kind of way you can do this is to go to their Instagram page, go to their Facebook page, LinkedIn. Sometimes the email will be right there. If it's somebody that works for a company, there's an email searching tool that I love. It's called Twitter.io. And what you'll do is you'll type in the URL. So say, for example, you want to find somebody um, who's like influencer Sally. Uh, that's not a good example, but like influencerx.com. And you'll go to the type in their site and it will actually crawl the site and pull up every single email on that site, even if it's not discoverable. So I think that's What's one up? good way to find the actual. Is that email. Going? Oh, my echo? Good one, yes. Yeah. I'm echoing. I think, um, okay. How about now? Sorry about that. I think the curse of um, headphones is like still with us for some reason <laughs> since the last threads. I don't know what that is, but thank you. And thank you for, for uh, standing by. I feel like a DJ right now. It's really ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> okay. DJ MZ um, at the Primful <laughs> headquarters. Good. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, all right, okay. Career change, no biggie. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, next question. This is for Jaren. Uh, maybe oh, yes. you could um, go into detail uh, regarding the Over app for a little bit. People were asking oh, yeah. like, what it's like, what to do with it. Yeah, yeah, okay. So great, 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 great question. Thanks so much for uh, whoever asked that. So uh, the Over app, 
uh, basically is a beautiful, beautiful creation that has not been around for long. And it essentially takes all of the legwork that most people have to learn when it comes to like Photoshop or Illustrator. Uh, there's a really, really big learning curve. Those two are unfortunately like super unintuitive. Uh, Over is literally just, it's, I mean, it's the closest thing to like Bob Ross. You literally just like drop beautiful PNGs. Uh, you can adjust the artwork. Uh, on my course, I, I, that's for free on our YouTube channel, I talk a million times about uh, using watercolors. So Creative Market uh, is another good example. They have a beautiful archive of uh, hand-drawn watercolors. So I'm talking like uh, flowers, uh, roses, all this just immaculate, beautiful stuff, and it's all it's all PNG'd. So you basically could drop that in uh, to your phone, uh, bring that into inside of the Over app, and you can you know say, uh, say example you had like a, a Christian T-shirt said "Be the Light," and you made like had a beautiful watercolor rose on it. Uh, you could design that in a couple of minutes. Uh, have some Christian SEO, throw it up on Etsy, and you have a you know a really badass shirt that is unique and uh, you know, not a lot of people have seen. And it's so intuitive. Like I said, it's just literally with your iPhone. Like I've literally made a million dollars and I've just literally just uh, bringing beautiful artwork to this world through the channel of Etsy and a heck of a lot of, of uh, watercolors. And so very simple, very intuitive. Like I said, copy and paste. You're just copy and paste. Like I'm a big fan, like you have the base, so like your words, so like you talked about be the light. And then just spruce it up, you know. Uh, throw a little bit of roses in there, flowers, uh, angel wings, anything that is, you know, cohesive with that particular uh, saying. And the basically use the full power of Printful is really what it is. Like the stuff that you can design because you essentially can print anything on a T-shirt that you can print on a printer gives you just infinite possibilities. And you're just going to crush the competition because most people own. Uh, like print shops, you know, they're, they're single color. And if you have two colors, it costs twice as much. So if you go apples to apples, like, and you're, you know, you're on the shelf of consideration for, you know, say Christian shirts for this example, and you just have this banging, beautiful, amazing watercolor, be the light, you know, roses and all this beautiful color. Uh, and it's at the same price point, you know, $20 t-shirt, you're gonna, your conversion rate is going to be through the roof. You're going to crush your competition because most of it's going to just be black or whiting. 90% of the stuff on Etsy, black or white ink. And so, big fan, I always say, like, it, there's a funny thing, like, on my, like, YouTube squad is always, like, um, uh, use more color. So I just nonstop, I'm like, use more color, use more color. And that's just a testament to Printful. I mean, we've been with you guys for so long, and your guys' the machines are just ridiculous now. And, like, you can just print slamming stuff and just beautiful colors. And so just take full advantage of that. Thanks. Good advice. And our, yeah. our printers are insane. They kind of yeah. look like spaceships, even <laughs> intimidating to be in the No, they of are. They're, it, but, it's uh, such it's really a good cool. resource. I got to admit, it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, thank you. Um, this next one's for Jonas. What characteristics of an ad build trust? So it's about trust building in advertising. What do you have to say about that? That's a good question. I mean, People talked about it a little bit before, using user-generated content that just works so much better than using the, the static images of, of um, the product itself. So actually showing people using the products, that's that's just way, much, way, way, way better than we get so much more cheap or cheaper traffic by using those images instead of the, the normal stock images. So as soon as you can, I mean, even just take a photo of yourself with the product on and you don't even have to show your face. If you don't have the the money or the the means to do a, a whole photo shoot, just uh, just do the images yourself. Uh, that that's more than fine. Mm -hmm. So, gotta yeah. stay real and be authentic, I guess. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And also, just for in in terms of the retargeting, I mean, if you can if you can if you have your ads running and you can instead of showing the product again, just showing your face, saying, "Hey, I saw you looked at my store," blah blah blah. That, that just works insane instead of uh, showing the product again. So if you can do that and you're up for it and actually building the brand on your face, that's that's even better than, than showing the, the product again. That, that just works so much more, so much more trust than, than, yeah. than everything else. That's a good tip. So you, you and, don't have to hide who you are, right? If you're proud of your brand, so you can just show your face and be like, ha, this is me. 
Right. Yeah, people want to buy from people and not someone they don't know. Absolutely. Yeah. Nice. Thank you for that. Um, this one, next one, this next one is for Connor, and the question goes like this: When starting an e-commerce business, when do you think is a good time to start offering promo codes? Um, yeah, I guess it totally depends on your margin, right? Like, if you've got a really tight margin and you put up a ton of cash, and you're just like, no, we need to go and pay back this this uh, fixed capital that we put in uh, this on capital in the beginning. Um, you know, maybe just try to keep on selling at full price. I think at the end of the day, though, giving a 10% off discount code uh, just to go and capture someone's email um, is never a bad idea because at the end of the day, like like with Privy, for example, when I've, I've been working there now for a couple months, uh, we noticed that with most small e-commerce stores, the average value of an email address captured is $33. Okay, and so that varies, of course, based on if you're selling you know, $2,000 goods versus $20 goods. Um, but so what that means though, really, is that if you're building up an email list and you're able to go and consistently go and send emails, uh, you're able to go and grow your sales that way. And so giving a 10% discount code on a $20 product, right? If you can afford the $2 hit to your margins, I would say go and at least try that early on. Just that way you can go and use discount codes to build up your list, increase your conversion rate, um, and grow your sales in the long term. All right. Super. Thank you. Again, hope you're taking notes, guys. And we have time for one last question, and I want to direct this to Kim and Keandra. And you kind of talked about this for a little bit, but you know, one more question can't hurt. Um, so, did you experience any anxiety and fear that comes with launching? And if so, what did you do to overcome it? That's a good question. Um, we absolutely did, um, because our business is so focused on. Um, on our weight, um, but it's a, a topic that is um, a touchy topic. Um, and so um, and we're not waging war on anybody and we wanted to make that, you know, clearly known that we're not, we are just building up our own, you know, community. And so um, we did have a little fear and anxiety and not to mention the normal fear and anxiety that comes with that starting a business, you know, will people buy from you? Will they like you? Will they you know, will you fail? You know, that kind of thing. The way that we get over that anytime is through prayer. We are a Christian, so we do pray and uh, we talk to each other. We have a small community of, um, you know, friends and family that we can bounce ideas off of us also. So um, it's about having a community if you're, you know, a Christian, you know, praying. So, you know, doing whatever it takes for you um, to be able to, you know, lessen your anxiety. And moving forward, <laughs> most important. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, that was the last question of today, guys. That was awesome. What What else can I say? I, I, I feel like I keep saying awesome over and over again, but it just was awesome. It's such a pleasure to have you here. Um, and thank you, dear speakers, for being here and sharing your tips and your learnings. And it's been great to have you here. And I hope you all keep kicking butt well into the year 2021. So big thanks to you guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome. Okay, and dear viewers, well, thank you for tuning in. Um, thank you for your questions and comments. It was a delight to hear from you. Uh, it's always a delight to hear from you. And we hope that the speakers today gave you some words of inspiration and encouragement that you can take into the new year and just start something fresh, start something new, build your business. And as a thank you to those of you watching, you can browse around Printful, play with our, uh, play with our on-site design maker, and order some cool custom products for yourself, um, and use the coupon code THREADSCOMMUNITY at checkout. So all you have to do is um, create your order, and when you get to checkout, type in THREADSCOMMUNITY in the little coupon code area, and then you'll get a $5 discount off your order. So pretty neat, right? I think not, not bad at all. So THREADSCOMMUNITY. Five bucks, five bucks off. Um, there, uh, so there, there was on there it was on the screen. I hope you guys had time to catch it. There, there it is one more time. So anyway, the coupon expires at the end of January 25th, and that's January 25th LA time. So you still have a few days to decide on what product you want to get, what design you want to get, and just enjoy. 
uh, I think today you got plenty of inspiration on, uh, on how to make it all work. Um, please make sure to check out the terms and conditions in the YouTube video um, description regarding the, the coupon, but other than that, you're all set. Um, and for more tips on how to start your online POD business, feel free to browse around printful.com. You can check out our blog. You can check out our YouTube site. We've got plenty of, um, plenty of videos on there that could be helpful for you. Um, and yeah, well, same as last time, I guess. Let's keep this goodbye short and sweet because you'll hear from us soon enough. So thank you, everyone, once again, and um, see you later.